Today is the 24th, number of climb trees at the location is one, also bucket tree. So we're going to be using the bucket for what we can, climbing for the rest. Uh, climbers can be me and Jason, and then bucket operators, same. Uh, rescue climber I put down Richie, and gear will be inspected by me. Uh, the reason why we're climbing a bucket accessible tree is because it can't reach. Now for hazards, we have uneven terrain, small road here. Uh, wildlife. Um, last time there were some bats in the tree. We want to make sure of that. We're not getting attacked by bees or anything like that, guys. Um, we have some loose limbs up there. Uh, the tree's been burnt previously. That cat face, you can see signs of burning. Um, it also has decay and weak spots down at the base and the roots. Um, they've kind of peeled back and you can see that decay in there. We have power lines, service drop, um, houses, windows, same for over there, a guide wire and a driveway down there. So I want to make sure we're paying attention to all that stuff. We're going to be using the bucket, like I said, a hundred footer to climb out, limit up and then climb out of that and take over from there climbing. important to have these saws razor sharp and when he's cutting those pieces if he cuts slow they'll hinge and when they hinge down if they break off they get all that momentum when they break they'll come flying out towards the truck and then also we're using a little bit bigger than a climb saw they have a little bit more power so you're able to zip through the cut a little faster uh, the first day I started out I was using the 100 footer to delimb what we could reach and um, yeah we didn't reach much <laughs> you know um, and the, the size of the limbs were just massive um, and the hang time when you cut them how long it would take to hit the ground was insane you know and power lift uh, it can lift us up into the tree so we run the rope through it it will actually uh, lift us up at 1.7 feet per second and it'll go on one battery life uh, 700 feet we're gonna set a rope up there uh, from the hundred footer pull ourselves up put in a new climb line uh, one of our double systems and then come back down and work our way back up so we'll have a high tie and uh, that way the gear isn't so heavy on me.
we've maxed out with the bucket, so we will just be climbing this. Uh, lots of brush out here. We're going to be setting up rigging today to blow that top. So we want to make sure you're careful walking through the brush, safety glasses, don't poke your eye out. Rigging and felling plan. Since we're going to be rigging that top out, I filled this out. I drew our lines. It has the end pole, the power lines. It's got the tree. What we're going to be doing, topping it with the face cut. I'm going to be using a hand line, pulling out there, probably half inch rope, running to big red. I'd rather have more pulling power than we need, but for sure, for sure. You know, I don't want to get up there and be oh no, we need more cranking and rope jack won't get it yeah. done. Favor. The top just kicks back just right. Sure. Alright, be safe, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, really good. Did it make it over those oaks? It went over the oaks? All right.
the 500i is a climber's best friend. It is a lightweight saw that has a lot of power. Uh, we were running a 36 inch bar on it and that is a perfect combo for that saw. It is able to cut and not bog down and having that power is crucial when you're making those back cuts and you need to get through that piece of wood quicker so that way there's no potential for barber chair. We were double cutting with it. So cutting from one side, transferring around the tree, making our second cut to get that uh, pie cut or the face cut out. And then we were doing the back cut same way, cut from one side, go around to the other side. Good? Okay. further we got down the tree we were running out of real estate with that bar it was too small the wood got too big so we had to switch it up and start using uh, Husqvarna 3120 which is the biggest saw that Husky makes it runs 120 cc's and we had two different bars for that we had a 54 inch bar and a 72 inch bar that bucket in place and try and use that bucket right now make it easier to take that chunk and then we'll fall it from the ground with the bucket we'll have two ropes in it we got another big red or something another point uh, we could hook this one to the uh, rope back and then the full rope to the big red. Two inch bar it was big heavy hard to maneuver so making those cuts we were actually having to use the 500i to start a cut to have a a guide for that 72 inch bar to sit in and then we could use that to cut while in the tree
3120 came through, you know, uh, and Tyler, man, that dude, he, he, he could sling a saw, you know, um, 72 inch bar and all, throwing a face cut in it, you know, and then the further we got into it, just the more defected that tree was and simply mesmerized that that tree was still standing. that rope when you're taking it off put the rope out here so it's out in front of this got it okay clear of my rope and yeah. then I will go crank on big red yes okay sounds like a good one and so right now this okay. is gas and oil yes. okay Luckily, I didn't have to do that. Only Jason had to use that big saw up there because it is, it's heavy. It is really hard to maneuver when you have that much weight on your hip when you're climbing around. You know, I'm already in an awkward position on my spikes for a minute, you know, and getting a little uncomfortable. And they tie me on the 3120 and okay, now we're putting X amount more weight on my saddle, my spikes, you know, and like, all right, you know, so pull up the saw, and now the saw's in my hand, and I have this 50, 50, 54 inch bar. I got to sneak in that back cut, you know. After I'm, I'm, I'm tired, I won't lie, and uh, I managed to stab it in there first try, you know, 31 20, 54 inch bar. Here we go, you know. And, it's exactly what we needed, you know, the power and everything, and without hesitation, and it caught that middle that we didn't catch. This big and heavy of a piece held on. Hey, I told you I was down far on my holding rope. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see mine I cut across. Yeah. That's crazy, man.
it all tightens. This is 25 to 1. Oh, wow. This is 50 to 1. Okay, so I start off with 25 and then I go to yeah, 50. Yeah, see how slow that is? Yeah. Okay, there you go. They don't gas the strap, right? I'm out. quicker than you think. Yeah. Being rotten like that, I could feel it went too far. It just, the salt would take off until you got in there. Yeah. I felt that, like you said, when I was cutting yeah. that one cut, and then all of a sudden, raw. Yeah. Yeah, that top piece was just bogging, and then all of a sudden, rock. Open it up more? Yeah, a little bit yeah, bigger I would face. Just, I would and then I uh, will knock that back. lip off. I was very surprised when we made that last space cut and to see the actual quality and the integrity of that wood inside that tree, it was very concerning that before that we were 200 feet in that and now we're <laughs> cutting it down and there's it's just rotten and hollow and the defect played a big part of that. So definitely makes you think about if you want to do another one or not because of what you can't see when you're cutting them down.
having to go over was it, it was relieving you know it, it, was, it was it was success and, you know it's like and then at the same time it was it was over you know it, we were done now it's time to pack up go home kind of you know but yeah getting that bottom that 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 final cut in was very satisfying and i wasn't even the one cutting it you know